Hi, this is Ben from 561 Music Podcast. Right now, we're trying to get a thousand subscribers on YouTube. It just helps us get out there more. It also enables us to monetize the podcast, to make it better, do more advertising for it and things like that. Subscribe to the podcast and hit the notifications button. That would be doing us a really big favor. Thank you very much. <laughs> Welcome, welcome to 561 Music. My name's Ben. And I'm Hector. And how are you doing, dude? I'm not doing too bad, man. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, yeah. I've been keeping real busy, which is great. Yeah, yeah. What did we do this weekend? We played uh, played Patty Max on Friday. Yep. And then we had uh, we had an interesting, a really interesting private gig on Saturday. Yeah. At Haggerty's Garage in, yeah. in uh, Boca. Yeah. Man, the place was insane. They had all these classic cars and... And and cars from like movies would they have like the Ferris Bueller's Day Off yeah. Ferrari and the, yep. the Porsche from uh, Risky Business and it was so cool. Yeah, it was a really cool place. Yeah, it, it was, was the really best. Cool place. I just got a gig uh, uh, helping someone write songs, which is fun. Nice. So that's something I'm doing, like a recovery related type thing. Nice. I had yeah. the uh, I must have had the uh, the car. Uh, the the car bug this weekend because i went out and bought a golf cart this week oh, okay. and it's like all decked out and like lifted and lights <laughs> underneath and yeah man, oh you did it get the lifted one in the oh end? it's so ridiculous it looks like the batmobile but golf cart style man it's so stupid that's awesome <laughs> yeah are we going to tow it to bluegrass festivals now absolutely oh, <laughs> like, can you even do that or do you need a trailer of course you need a trailer. well you need a trailer but yeah, i mean yeah. it's fine you get a trailer at u-haul for 15 dollars a day yeah, or something. either that yeah. or the wheels go like a bazillion miles yeah, an hour and I'm, smoke yeah you want to do that yeah it's fine <laughs> <laughs> you can avoid that <laughs> yeah, absolutely so uh all right we have the jay bernardo band here how's it going guys we're good I'm doing good thank you how are you very well thanks for coming appreciate thanks it for having us yeah it's yeah. good to be here yeah it's uh i don't know a huge amount about you guys so this is a perfect opportunity to find out um first question and I, i'm just going to ask each of you individually um when you started playing music when you were young what was how was that? Were your parents supportive? Did you, did you start playing at a young age? Well, um, <clears throat> for me personally, um, yeah, I was a kid. I think everything started with my sister. She's a little, she's three years older than me, and um, she she still has a beautiful voice, and she was always singing around the house. Nice. So she'll be telling me, hey, sing this song with me, sing this song with me. So that's how it started. Oh, nice. Yeah. Cool. When did you start playing guitar? Uh, uh, that was going to... When I was like 21, 22. Oh, okay. Yeah, I picked up the guitar on my own. Yeah. 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 Do you have le you had no lessons? You just figured it no, out? No, but when I was like 12, my mom tried to put me in guitar lessons, but I wasn't that interested. Yeah. You know? Anything so. your parents make you do, do you don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when you're that age, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it, man. <laughs> what about you, Shira? How long have you been playing the cello? Um, since I was seven years old, but on and off. Um, right. I saw a children's um, show. And uh, there was a creature who played the cello, and uh, I fell in love with the sound. And I bugged my mom like for weeks to like get me to cello lessons. So oh, finally, she gave up, and she was like, "Okay." <laughs> it does sound beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the cello and the tenor sax are very close to the yeah. human Human's voice. Human voice, yes, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So it's very you know emotive. Very, yeah. yeah. So when you were young, um, were your parents supportive of your musical aspirations? I think so. Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely, because my mom, she's uh, uh, she's been into music all her life, too. She plays the piano and she sings and the guitar. So and oh, my nice. dad loves music. He plays a little bit of saxophone. So oh, nice. cool. from Israel, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Um, how long have you been here? Since 2016. 16, okay. gotcha. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. recent. I moved yeah. here in 2010, so oh. beat you by a couple of years, but... Yeah, yeah. How do you like it over? I love it here. Yeah. Yeah, it's good fun, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Where in Israel are you from? Um, I'm from Erzeria. It's near Tel Aviv. It's like okay. by the beach. So oh, I have a, nice. I have a really good friend of mine, uh, uh, Oren, the guy that does our our shirts. Yeah. He, him and his wife are from uh, Netanya. Oh, it's nearby. Yeah. It's, yeah. Everything is nearby in Israel. So <laughs> <laughs> we're that's like fair. all neighbors. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, yeah. So when you when you moved to uh, the states uh, did did you 
try and find music to get involved in like immediately? Yeah, uh, I went to Lean Conservatory f- right. uh, to take just like lessons. Another um, place a friend of mine went there. Yeah, yeah, and then after that, I finished my studies at FIU in okay. uh, music. Oh, great. Yeah, I nice. did a music degree as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's good stuff. A great way to meet people you know. right my best friendships are through music so i'm very grateful absolutely mm-hmm. uh, um steve how did you uh, find yourself playing music yeah so i don't come from a musical family at all yeah. um i kind of stumbled upon it in high school right. um, i was hanging out with a friend at his house and uh his brother was <coughs> messing around on the guitar and i'd always stop in and i think he noticed i was like man that's really cool and his his main instrument was actually piano. Yeah. And uh, one day I started messing around with him, playing, and uh, he was like, here, dude, take it home. I'm like, no freaking way. That's freaking cool. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's funny, actually. That's kind of how I got started. Um, I took the guitar home, and I had it for probably oh, 20 years or so. Oh, great. And I uh, actually recently was able to return it to him not too long ago, which was kind of kind of neat. It was kind of a neat story. Took it, we took it out on one of our gigs oh, and actually nice. invited him to it. The and circle during, was at, complete. Yeah, <laughs> after our first set, we kind of, I, he had no idea. After our first set, I brought the guitar out and was like, hey, man, thanks for, thanks for this. Thanks for paying it forward, man. You yeah, changed my right. life. But, um, you know, it was, it was a good moment. But, you know, I haven't, I haven't, uh, I didn't take any lessons or anything like that. I'm just completely self-taught. Like YouTube University type yeah, stuff? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, trying to transcribe songs and learn by year and just learn whatever I can from whoever I can. You know yeah. what I mean? And even now to this day, and that's actually one of the things I like the most about playing music is it's like you never really stop learning. When you think you know everything, Yeah, there's always something you, you, get, you get slapped down. I was just talking to my friend about that today because I've just started playing this really weird instrument and um, called the hurdy-gurdy and... Uh, I was saying that, you know, it, music is just a never-ending sea yeah. of stuff you can learn, and it's just so yeah. cool like that, you know? It, yeah. If you're into it, then you're just on this path that never has to end. So yep. cool. Yeah, and you learn something from every genre. You know, you pick something up. I'm, I've am i never locked myself into one genre, and, and that's the beauty of it. You know, you go. I, st- I started playing punk rock music. Yeah. And then, you know, turn alternative, and then, you know, funk. And, like, when you, you pick something yeah. different from each genre, it's great, and Studying each, each musician, yeah, too, st- studying what these guys are doing. Like, man, I would never th- would have thought of doing that. That's freaking awesome. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I get it. I always think it's kind of strange when people are very narrow minded about music, and actually, most people aren't. You know, most people have a pretty broad yeah. music yeah. appreciation. So, um, seeing as there's so so many people from so many different places, um, uh, Steve, were you born in the U.S.? I was, yeah. I was born in New York, right? Um, up in uh, Merrick, Long Island. Okay. And then my family moved down here when we were 12. And I've kind of been down here ever since. Okay, cool. 12. Yeah, yeah so that's, that, I guess, it's quite a long time at yeah. this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My father's Greek. My my mother's uh, Jewish. Right. So. Cool. Yeah, my uh, my wife is from New York. Oh, cool. So what part? I'm, I'm, she's from Oyster Bay, Long Island. Oh, okay. Yeah, which is pretty far out, I think. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, um, I was going to ask, because um, I, I forgot to ask you, Jay, um, you're from Chile, right? From Chile, yeah. yeah. How long have you been here? Been here 15 years Okay. already, yeah. About the yeah, same I amount of time. I lived in um, Illinois, Okay. and I moved here almost four years ago. I can't believe it, though. Time flies. Yeah, it does. Went really fast, really fast. How do you like Florida? Oh, I love it. Yeah. I love the weather. Yeah, it's great, yeah. isn't it? It's a good life down What here. do you think of... Uh, what do you think of the music scene down here versus when you were in Chicago? <clears throat> well, honestly, um, when I was in Chicago, I didn't play music with. I, I never. <coughs> I was never part of a, of a band when I was there. I was just with my acoustic guitar playing in my room, just recording myself and trying to write songs. And once I moved to Florida, that's that's when I joined to to my first band. Yeah. How nice. did you find? The, how did you find this group of people? Well, everything started. Um, so when I moved. Um, I made an account on Bandmix. You guys familiar with that? Yep. Yeah. So, and Good old um, Bandmix. <laughs> yeah. <Good> old Bandmix. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I just put up a few songs, and they sent me an email um, that they were auditioning a rock singer. And I was like, I like rock. You know, why, why not give it a shot? Yeah. And yeah. Um, that should be a T-shirt. 
<laughs> I like rock. Why not? Give it a shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's how it started. And um, then Steve joined the same band. We were yeah. part of another band. And um, and then... Oh, you it, were in the same band? Before, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, gotcha. Steve was part of the same band before me. Okay. And, um, yeah, so that band, I got kicked out, and then I got asked to come back. And then when I came back, Jamie was a part of the band. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Um, so uh, now, is is it like a, is it your main thing? Is it you guys, is, are you playing, how often do you play out? Well, lately, um, we are just trying to get into the studio, record some songs. Okay. Yep. Um, we play a couple of shows. Well, we play actually a bunch of shows. Yeah, last year last we played year. a bunch. Yeah. Um, it's quite easy to get busy if that's the way you want to go. You know, yeah. there's three, four hour shows. The, yeah, you yeah. can find a show yeah. all the time, everywhere. Yeah. So, yeah, but we try to focus now on running some new material and get into the studio. No, now, it's... when you guys play out, are you playing Are you playing like these these uh, three, four hour cover gigs and things? Or are you doing like your own? Try to stay away from that as much as we can. So you're, yeah. you're just doing like the shorter yeah, set so, uh, you know, of originals? Two or? hours, okay. you know, yeah. two sets. That sort of where thing. Uh, where do you guys where where are you all based? Like in it, 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 is it local to like where we are right now? Palm Beach County, yeah. Uh, we've done some even South Miami, okay. Miami Beach. Like, um, where do you all live? Well, I live in Deerfield. Okay. Yeah. She lives in Boca, Lake yeah, I live Worth. In Lake Worth. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Members that live in Oakland Park and yeah. um, Coconut Creek. Yeah. yeah. Speak, speaking of, so there's there's. For those watching and listening, there's five members of the band, correct? Correct. All right. So yeah, the other guys, the other guys, we there. have we have <laughs> yeah, locked locked here. up in the back of the studio. They're not allowed <laughs> out. <laughs> They've been bad. They're not allowed out. It's awesome. <laughs> you all came though, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah they're great. They're yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. 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 This this group of people that we have right now, it's uh, it's really awesome. Like we all connect so well, and <coughs> we enjoy to be around each other so much. So like making music that. with them, it's 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 great. I feel very lucky. That's important. With these guys. Yeah. That's important. It's almost, rare. almost. I'd almost venture to say more important than having super high quality musicians. It's almost more important to have musicians that you gel with, that you that you get along with, that you're friends with outside of the band, because it makes everything in the band effortless. Yeah, totally. And yeah. I would argue that a high quality musician part of that is personality. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I rather have like <clears throat> as band members. A ten of a person than a five of a person at ten of a musician. Sure, yeah. you know 100%. what I mean. Sure, and, yeah, yeah. So, and and we all became friends so fast, yeah. like we all connected so well. So yeah. it's it's really great. Yeah, no, that's important. I mean, Ben and I are in a band together, and I hate Ben, so it's really it's really <laughs> hard to function sometimes. <laughs> Especially with this too. He right. rarely ever does. Right. Uh, I don't get a minute to myself. <laughs> so um, you said you're writing material. Um, <coughs> How how many songs have you guys got at the moment? Have you got a bunch? We got um, we have a bunch that are not finished yet. Sure, right. Um, we have like around I don't know six that are completely done. Right. So we're planning on getting to the studio and try to release them one by one instead of like release right. a whole. I think album. that's the way to do it these days. Yeah. I don't know if there's a a better way than that anymore. You know, because we we just recorded an album, and. Uh, and then you go to promote it, and everything is set up for a single, you know, mm -hmm. promotion-wise. It's yeah. really difficult to even really know how to promote an album anymore. Well, not only that, you sent, you know, like like you said, we we did we did this album. You know, we put all this energy and all this time and all this money and everything into this album, and then we released it, and it was like, that's it. Yeah. Like we could have released ten songs instead, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. like one at a time, and had ten, you know, big releases. But instead, it was just the one. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I think we learned we well we kind of what the thing is there was quite a few tracks on the album we just released that um were uh, like older songs that we've kind of redone so it was almost just about kind of stamping like this is what the band is now you is know? now yeah I feel like the next album with that you know should yeah, definitely do yeah. that. Uh, um have you got any idea where you're thinking of uh, recording where yeah. Yeah, we are going to be recording in Power Station. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. 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 Great. We, we had a meeting with them and we all loved it. So we, yeah. Yeah, it's a great spot. I've, I've done some recording in there. Yeah. And I'm just about to, uh, maybe, we'll see in a couple of weeks. Cool. Uh, yeah, yeah so. we're about to get into the studio right now, too. Next week or so. Yeah. Nice, man. Yeah. That's exciting. Do you guys have a, uh, a writing process? Like, is, do, is there a way that your songs happen? Um, 
generally, uh, <coughs> I think I will write something with my acoustic guitar and thinking of what they can do because they're all so excellent musicians that I just take it to them and they make it a hundred times better. <laughs> right, so yeah. yeah, so that's mostly how, yeah. how we say do it. We all work collective. on it once I just. Yeah, it's great. He'll come up with a, a melody, a vocal melody or something, and then we'll start coming up with some music stuff or he'll come up with some general and then we'll I'll tweak it. She will get her cello out and start playing that and nice. it's all downhill from there. <laughs> is uh is all the lyrics you Jay, or uh, do you guys all kind of chip in on um, the lyrics? Yeah, Mo- mostly I I, right. I do. Yeah, I I write the lyrics. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean that that sounds that's a pretty sort of that's a relatively typical way of doing it. You know, is have someone who kind of brings the little kernel yeah. and then it gets expanded by yeah. the rest of the band. Yeah. yeah, it's really interesting. Like. Um, like uh, one of the songs that we all really love to play is called Rice. And um, when I wrote that, like I knew exactly what I what I wanted that to sound like. And I even told Steve before Shira joined, I was like, we should have a like a violin or, or a cello player. And it's going to, you know, and then we met Shira and she came out with this great great music for the song. And it's just... Yeah. yeah, I love that you guys have a cello player in a band. Like that just like, that just opens up this whole different sound to the band that yeah. you know, that a lot of people just don't have. It's yeah. soulful kind of uh, yeah. smooth quality. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's cool. What do you guys all play in the band? Um so you're on guitar and vocals, right? Yeah, yeah. Then, so some of some of the songs I play acoustic guitar, but most of them I just sing. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Cool. And then Shira, you're you're on the cello. Do you yeah. play anything else in the band? <clears throat> not no not in the band and not not really. Like I, Do you ever sing? <laughs> you don't want to hear her sing. Okay, <laughs> <I got you. laughs> I want to hear you sing. Come on. You she wants to go to karaoke, wanna, so we're like, you're yeah, going to have to sing. You definitely want to hear her sing. <laughs> yeah. I think it, singing is a funny thing because it's so personal yeah. and it comes from like right within you. So I think that um, a lot of people who probably are very good singers don't realize it because there's good, you know there's that kind of there's that barrier of worrying about doing it there's a vulnerability to exactly. it exactly you know yeah. like, That's the word I, I, was I, know, I know when i'm when i'm you know singing with you guys in the band and stuff i don't even think twice about it i just do it but i have this big instrument in front of me kind of blocking me a little <laughs> bit you know so then you know i'll go to karaoke with like my sister or something and then i when i stand there singing i got my head i got my head down my hand in my pocket and i don't want to look at anybody oh, and I'm like, yeah it's crazy yeah. i feel naked without it, like the actually, instrument in front really of me it's really hard to get out of that bubble it's yeah. crazy yeah. how like nerve-wracking it is when you don't have like an instrument on you or something you know and then even the first few shows you know because you know i've been a singer in bands before just a singer and um the first few shows it's it's almost like you have to figure out what movements well, yeah. work you know yeah. like when you just kind of go <laughs> straight you, you yeah. see the beat and you're like oh no <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, can't I did that yeah totally yeah but where we're recording this right now live music community we rec- we uh we teach bands to be bands and we do a lot of that in this in this room and um right before the shows you know we'll be encouraging them to kind of move around and start you know testing out some poses and mm-hmm. things we have these cameras so we can film them and they can see what they look like yeah mm-hmm. oh, that's pretty cool yeah it's pretty it definitely helps. That, that's them. what he did with me oh really yeah I, at first i wouldn't even I move on stage you know. just in the short time we've been together because we haven't been together that long just i'm very i guess analytical and critical and i watch the videos of our performances and like i want to get better every single time sure yeah, yeah. So I was like, Jamie, <coughs> you gotta watch yourself. Move around like you're seeing, like what you're doing, and like this is cool. Do more of this. Do less of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So Jamie, in particular, in the short time we've known each other, he's gotten a million times better at performing because it's different, right? Yeah. Being yeah. a per- performing and actually yeah. going to a studio, two completely different worlds. Yeah, absolutely. Well, being able to see yourself like that on video has got to be huge. I mean, I know for a fact, just from other bands I've been in and stuff, that you know, I. I'll have somebody tell me, you know, I, I don't know, I'll get off the stage and somebody will say, you know, like, man, you got to you gotta move or something. You're up there playing the bass and you're just, you know, this is like a band that I was playing like electric bass so I could have the freedom to move around. Right. And, I, you know, they're like, oh, you got to move. And I'm like, what are you talking about, man? I was all over the place. And then I watched the video and I was like, you know, barely barely shuffling. <laughs> but in my head, <laughs> yeah. in my head, yeah. I was on that yeah. corner and I was yeah. on that corner and I was jumping up and down. <laughs> and yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah, it's very different when you watch yourself yeah. doing Once it. Once you yeah. become aware... It, 
makes you change and get better. Oh, yeah. absolutely. And and it's even like, stuff like some sort of syncopate, some stuff where you're doing it together, um, which sounds like it would be really, really cheesy. If done right, it can work super well, yeah. you know? Like, we had three MCs in one of the bands I was in, and every now and again, we'd like, we'd sort of lock into like a little bit of a, a thing, and it, huh. it worked great, but you just gotta be careful with it, because it can be super cheesy. <laughs> if, if every now and again you do it, it works pretty good. Like the Temptations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I maybe. just had a, a visual of you guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. He was in a ska punk band, so I can That's see that cool. like in the ska yeah, punk yeah, band. Yeah, yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it could work. <laughs> it could work. So, st yeah, Steve, you're, you're on guitar. What about the other guys? Who, who, what other members of the band are, are not here, and what do they play? Uh, so, um, it's not here right now. It's Dennis, who's a, a percussionist slash vocalist. Okay. Um, and also Raham, who's a killer bass player. He's our oh, bass great. player. Yeah. Nice. Good stuff. Phenomenal musicians. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, by percussion, is it like drum kit, or do you have like a different? So setup? he does drums. Um, he also does congas. Um, nice. We also, when we plan on recording, we're probably gonna we have a session drummer we're gonna use. Yeah. Um, and he's also a great singer, so he's gonna do some backup vocals. He's got like a lower voice. Nice. It's real nice. Yeah. It's yeah. funny what you were mentioning about like when you kind of like have something to hide behind. Because with Dennis, like, and when I first saw him, heard him sing. I was like, you're holding back, right? And, and when he finally was like, you're right. And he actually let it go, phenomenal. Oh, sounds excellent. like you're giving yeah. some sage advice over there. That's awesome. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you, right. like, I, I can't tell you how many bands I've been in that, that I, I barely sang any backup or anything. Um, you know, if I sang a lead on a song, it was like, you know, under protest i didn't want to do it um and it wasn't until killbillies that i really started we do it's three of us in the band we do three-part harmonies for a lot of the songs and so cool. i i started you know getting in there and doing a little bit more and a little bit more and you get that confidence and then yeah. all of a sudden now i just want to sing harmony on everything you <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now you can't get me to shut up no, which is great <laughs> you know it's great honestly so um do you do you like practice at, by yourself like at, as a sort of single person do you do you do you practice the guitar and and, and, yeah. and singing yeah all the time i yeah. try to write and or I, I like to play covers too yeah um but yeah I, i'm practicing almost every day i grab the guitar and sing a little bit yeah, or in great. the car yeah yeah i'm singing every every time i get in the car i'm singing yeah, yeah. that's awesome um what about you sure you do you play the cello at home uh yeah i play i used to play like four hours like a, a few years ago and now that i have a full-time job like that's my therapy when i get home i need to touch the cello like yeah excellent it's like even if it's just for a few minutes but i need it it's like no i get music it. Yeah. therapy it's yeah. a beautiful thing mm -hmm. <laughs> no it is and you know just to come back to the um this new sort of instrument journey that i've been going on it's it just gives you this whole other facet to your life it's like you know i'm excited mm -hmm. to get up in the morning because i know at some point i'm going to be practicing that. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about you steve are you practicing yeah i mean all the time um i love playing music i mean obviously just as much as you guys but sometimes if i'm having a busy day i wake up at whatever 5 30 in the morning i'm playing because i said or late at night or just getting it in it's just to me like shira and i'm sure like you guys as well it's therapy for my mind yeah, yeah. it's, it's kind like of what meditation keeps, keeps you sane gets I mean, you in the present i'll go in my, i have like a room in my house where i have you know my stuff and i'll go in there and i'll you know i'll be playing and i'll come out and my wife will be like what are you doing in there for so long what are you talking about i was only in there for 30 minutes she's like no you were in there for like four hours <laughs> i was like really oh yeah but you know you, your mind goes off in the la la land oh, yeah. And yeah you forget about the day you forget about what you have to have to be doing or your obligations which i guess could be good or bad but um I mean, I'm pra oh, constantly practicing for stuff we're doing, um, yeah. you know, or other other things as well. How often are you guys getting together as a band? Would you say roughly? Twice a week. Oh, yeah. there you go. Yeah, That's quite a lot. Yeah, good. for about for almost three hours. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, so you guys are taking it real serious, pushing. Oh, we do. Yeah. We do. Yeah. We do take it very seriously. Yeah, that's excellent. It's more yeah. than the twice a month that we get together oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> we play like four times we, a week so. we do so it's so, hard it's hard to find yeah. the practice time as we are playing like three four times a week so oh. yeah, yeah. But, uh, no you're right we do need to practice more <laughs> especially mm -hmm. coming up to saint patrick's day oh yeah, gosh yeah yeah but and you guys are gonna go nuts because i'm gonna bring my hurdy gurdy to the oh. <laughs> so um i guess you your band hasn't necessarily reached the the point of of promoting any 
material, but um, uh, how do you guys use social media and who is the one who's kind of sort of spearheads that, would you say? Um, well, we, we all do. Uh, yeah, okay. The, yeah, we uh, mostly uh, post stuff on Instagram. Right. You yeah. know, um, when we play a show, we post some pictures or videos. Yeah. You say it's like a regular, like have you got some kind of plan of it or you just sort of like d do it? We wing it. Okay, yeah. gotcha. <laughs> yeah. 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 We need a plan. We need a plan. Yeah, yeah <laughs> definitely do. Well, some people, you wouldn't believe it. You get them in here and they have this whole explanation of how they do it. But um, th we have a person who does it now, so that's just a game changer. We don't have to worry too much oh, about that's it anymore. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it costs money. But then we play so much that we've got a little bit of money to pay, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's one of the advantages of playing gigs all the time is there is money around. You know, but then the downside is that it can be a little bit of a creative killer. Mm. You know, that's what we, kind of the situation exactly. we found ourselves in. I mean, just this first quarter of this year, we were like, you know what? We're not booking any shows. We're gonna write our write and finish write the songs that we need to finish, and yeah. write some more original tunes, and start recording some stuff because we've been together for shoot a year. A year. Yeah, and we hadn't recorded anything, and we were like, "What are we doing? We're just playing a bunch of gigs all over the place." With, yeah. You know, you yeah. Well, I think it's important to do that as well, though. You know, because you find how you will play with each other, and you get a, a, you know a, more of a vibe of of what the band is. You yeah. know, so yeah. so I don't think you know a year is not that long, really. Yeah, yeah. 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 But um, no, I, I applaud you twice a week. That's a, that's great. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. It's making me uh, a little bit feel a little bit guilty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, crap. <laughs> now I'm going to be practicing twice a week. <laughs> Thanks, guys. There you go. Oops. There you go. <laughs> so when you guys are at shows, do you have do you have any kind of um, way of sort of dealing with like alcohol and and drugs and stuff like that? Do you find do you find that that's ever been an issue with any like? Well, that's quite a personal question, but I guess my point is I. I'm a recovering alcoholic, so, you know, I don't drink at shows anymore. And it's just a, uh, I find it interesting to ask people if, if, if they found it tough and how they, you know, how they deal with that situation. Um, me personally, I, I don't even drink. Yeah. Or I never done drugs either. Right. They, well, like, there you go. Yeah, yeah. They actually never really got my attention. So, yeah. So that, that, that's for me. Yeah. I don't yeah. think it's really been an issue for yeah. us as a band, which is, Nice and rare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, we all can have been able to keep it under control. At least the guys that have beer here and there. It's nice. I mean, it's nice to have a beer while you're playing. And sure. Stuff. Yeah. And before, after. Sure. But it's nice. We all been able to keep it under control and not have any incidents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. That's cool, though, Jay. You know, just not interested. Yeah. 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 They're really. Interesting. I don't think we've had anyone on here who that was their answer. Actually, that's pretty interesting. But one person, I can't remember who it was, but there was one person a couple of weeks ago. Uh, um, good stuff. So, um, would you say that music has like run in any of you guys' families? I know you sort of you said it didn't, but Shira, have you got like any sort of is your family like musical going back? Yeah. So my mom uh, finished a musical high school. And um, all my my grandmother used to also play, and uh, I think that it's it's a valuable thing in my house to to play an instrument. So, um, but again, it came for me. Like my mom didn't have to push me. Yeah. Whenever she told me to practice, I would never practice though. So, <laughs> yeah. but, but no, other than that, that it's. Uh, yeah, it it came also from home. The appreciation too. Is it um? Do you, do you is classical music a thing that you're um, interested in? So, so actually, I finished my degrees in uh, classical music, but I'm now like I love also like metal. I love rock. I love um, indie. I love every. <laughs> I'm sure. really open to like ethnic music, whatever it is. I, I want to try more of that than classical, I think. What was the the course exact? Mine was like a pretty general music course. Like, um, did yours have a, a focus? Yeah, I had orchestra, I had cello lessons, um, chamber music, uh, theory. 
I really liked theory. I'm kind of a nerd. So is, is Lind you know, is that like a conservatory? So I went to the conservatory and I took yeah. like private lessons, but I finished my degree at Florida International University down right. in Miami. So okay, and that was a bit more broad. And that was uh, yeah, very like broad and yeah, it was a cool experience. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what my degree was like. It was uh, it was pretty wide open like that. I had all sorts of different modules and went all over the place. It was yeah. cool. Yeah, I did that in Manchester a long oh. time ago now. Nice, <laughs> that sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. But um, I'm glad I did it because it gave me a little bit of time to meet the people, you know, from my band and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah, cool. So yeah. I think uh, at this point, probably be cool to hear you guys play a song. You up for it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. let's do it. Yeah, 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 yeah cool. Let's do it. <laughs> Thank you. 
561 Music is brought to you by Handlebars Bar and Grill. It's a biker bar in Tequesta, and if you're driving up US 1, you come across it on the right-hand side. It's a, a little bar there. It's bright yellow. You can't miss it with the handlebars on, on the sign. And it has a long and storied history. It's been there. It used to be called Judy's, um, and it was run by this guy Victor, who sadly passed this year, R.I.P. Victor. And uh, then my father-in-law took it over, and he's doing a great job up there. There is a bike night every second Thursday of the month, and there is a jam every fourth Sunday of the month. If you're interested in that kind of thing, it's just an all-inclusive, any any kind of music, any style, any ability type of a jam. And there's great beers on tap, and they're wonderful food. Bernsey the chef does, does a fantastic job. Um, if you're interested in classic cars or classic bikes, there's always that kind of stuff hanging around there. It attracts that sort of a crowd because it's called Handlebars Bar and Grill, so it makes sense. And, um, yeah, you should come swing by. It's uh, it's definitely a local spot and has a lot of character. And there's people who have been going there for decades and decades. It's one of those places that's um, a part of the furniture in Tequesta. And you should definitely come check it out. I um, book the music for the place and love doing it and um i was a part of helping set the place up and um i'm a huge fan and you should anyone who is interested in biker bars or even if you've just never been to one and you're curious about what a biker bar is about you should go and check out handlebars bar and grill we are also sponsored by oasis root now oasis root carver bar is in sea grape square on indian town road and it is a kava bar. If you don't know anything about kava, it's a Polynesian root that you grind up and you mix with water. And it has been in Polynesia for potentially thousands of years. It's, a, it's an old thing that um, they used for kind of ceremonial and also um, sort of ledger purposes. It, it's meant to be something where, you know, that brings people together. Um, you all take a, a shell of kava and chink them together and say bula and have it together like that. It's meant to be something to bring people together. It uh, has a kind of an effect, which is, I guess, a kind of a slightly warming effect. Uh, it just kind of makes you feel a, a, a nice. It's not particularly intoxicating. It's not like drinking alcohol. So the atmosphere in a kava bar is sort of like um, a cross between a regular bar and uh, a coffee house pretty chill in there um you get all sorts of different types of carver bars some of them are more like a club you know this sort of like black light and edm playing and some of them are more like a cafe this is one of the cafe type of ones it's it's super chill in there if you're looking for somewhere to i don't know maybe go and do some work on your laptop or go and have a chat with friends it's perfect for that kind of thing there's a foosball table in there if that's your jam or baby foot as they call it in france and uh yeah, Jim, the owner, is a really cool guy, and he has very kindly sponsored our podcast. So thank you very, very much for that, Jim. They also do a poker night in there. All sorts of things going on at Oasis Root Carver Bar. 561 Music is sponsored by Live Music Community. It's where we film the podcast that you're listening to right now, and it's also where I work. Gavin, Hector's son, was a student here for a long time, and in many ways he's the musician he is today because of the teachers at Live Music Community. We taught him not only about his instrument, but also about being in a band. And his band, Unemployed Youth, accomplished a lot of goals, mostly band etiquette, how to work together, and all of the nitty-gritty that goes into being in a band on a day-to-day -day basis. The student signs up for lessons, learns their instrument, joins a real band, and decides the direction it goes in. And we can take people from very young age, you know, six or seven years old, all the way up to 80. You know, there's no age limit here. Um, we run an adult program for people who want to be in a band as adults. But really, the main focus is on the on the kids and getting them playing together and in bands. Um, we are also a studio, a live stream venue, and can, we can record audio or video. The Killbillies live album, Warts and All, was recorded here. It was recorded during a live stream that we did during COVID. Justin had a great idea to record live streams during COVID. A ton of bands came in and it was a real success. Um, but outside of that, we can record albums. We can help you with your EPK. And we have full audio visual capabilities here. 
LMC is in Palm Beach Gardens on the northwest corner of Military Trail and North Lake Boulevard. It's north of the gas station right before you get to North Lake on Military Trail. And if you go to livemusiccommunity.com, you have all the information you'll need right there. Thanks. So seeing as we were uh, just listening to an ad about Live Music Community, which is where we're sitting right now, do you have any uh, advice for upcoming musicians by any chance? Um, I think um, what I could say is that just just practice as much as, as you can. Dedicate the time. If you love it, just dedicate all the time you can to it. Yeah. You'll get better. It's like it's, it's, it's like a muscle. Yeah. It gets better when, when you work it. You know? Yeah, absolutely. My uh, composition teacher when I was in high school, he always used to say, just try and compose one thing a day. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't have to be like a long piece, just even if it's like four bars or something, you know. Right, and right. Just keep it, yeah, keep that muscle worked up. It, yeah, absolutely. Um, what about you, Sherry? You got any advice for musicians out there? Yeah, I will say um, never give up. Like, get that passion burning. And even if so many doors close, like, never give up. If that's your dream, go all in and put your heart into it. Yeah, from from all of the sort of interviews, I feel like we live in the age of the interview at the moment. There's so many, there's so good gazillion podcasts out there. Everyone's interviewing everyone. And one of the things I've sort of picked up from people like entertainers who've been interviewed is the amount of rejection they've all had to face in their lives and the fact they've just kept going. The people who make it are the people who didn't stop. You know what I mean? It's pretty much as simple as that. Yeah. <laughs> you just got to keep plugging yeah. away. Yeah. Um, and even make it is a little bit of a weird thing to say because yeah. what is making it, you know? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's really just if you're happy with yourself and you're doing what you want to do, I guess. That's, all that that's, that's, that's the most important thing, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, that pretty much goes along with what you, know, you guys are saying is, you know, if you love it, you're going to do it. You know, the people say you don't have enough time in, to practice or enough time to do that. If you, really, if you really love what you're doing and you really want to do it, you're gonna find the time to do it. You, you find time to hang sure. out with your friends, and you know if you love music and you want to be successful, you're gonna make the time to practice. You're gonna be disciplined yeah. enough to carve out, even if it's 30 minutes. You know. Yeah. I, I know me. I keep my guitars all. You know, my house out. They have to be out. Yeah. And you pick them up anytime. You know, you walk by and That's you pick it. them up, play for they five minutes. Exactly. That's probably one thing I would recommend is if, you, if you're a guitar player, whatever instrument you play, keep your keep it out somewhere where you're always walking by it. Have you ever heard of Practice Warriors? It's this website that's a kind of dedicated to... What's it called? To pra practice practice warriors. warriors. No. Mm -hmm. So the reason why I said that is because that's that that's like almost yeah, his mantra. Beat, you beat me you know? to it. I was going to oh, say really? the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like practice it, it, Warriors? Yeah, they came on here, and it was really interesting, actually. Um, it, it has this whole website and um, community dedicated to the theory of practice, you know, right. as opposed to like, as opposed to teaching you lessons and stuff, it's like, how do you practice? How, yeah, mm. how do you practice? Once you learn the lesson, how do you practice mm. and to keep that, you know, keep that going? So it teaches, they teach you how to practice instead of teaching you the music. Hmm. You know? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah, so important. Yeah. I find it so important because some people, they just, they don't know how, to, they will do something over and over again. That's it. But it's That's important I'm, how. I'm terrible at practice. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but to, to, to Steve's point, like that was, that was what they said here when they came here on the show was, you know, if you play a guitar, for example, keep a guitar on a stand yeah. somewhere, keep it on a hook somewhere, you know, don't keep it in the case in the closet because mm -hmm. you'll never pull Too it out. Too much work pulling out. Right. Mm -hmm. If you want to do a 20 minute, you know, a 20 minute practice session, it's going to take you 10 of those minutes to take it out, set it up yeah. and then put it back away again. Yeah. So if it's sitting on a stand, you're going to walk past it or you're whatever. And, yeah. and, and that's true. I mean, I, I play that upright bass and it is a pain in my ass to take that thing out of the case and set it up and whatever. And, and so I often don't do it. And I find that the times that I, that I pull it out and I use it and I practice, if I set it on the stand and just leave it in the corner, mm -hmm. I tend to practice several more times that week instead yeah. of instead of like, you know, having to go and grab it out of the case yeah. every time. Yeah. yeah. Even if you deal. walk by it and you're on the way out the door and you're like, I got five minutes, Plucking five minutes, five minutes a day. That's, <laughs> it's 35 minutes, 35 yeah. more minutes. It's yeah. every seven days a week, yeah. you know, five totally. minutes more. I guess other than that, I would also say the other thing I would recommend is play stuff you love. Yeah. yeah. You know, you, you if you there's music that you like try to learn how to play it yeah. because it'll kind of keep you motivated and if you find yourself in a rut go see a concert yeah, it doesn't have to be a big go. one 
go yeah, to the, see, that's a the, huge the, one. The, the, yeah. the, the best concerts at the smallest venues. I know there's a lot of good ones around town. Yeah, that's Absolutely. what I would say. Go you see us. Get go inspiration see a concert. like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just seeing, being in that atmosphere and seeing what's going on. It, it's to me, it's motivating. I like seeing it. I always walk totally. out of a concert like, yeah, I'm gonna be famous. Yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah. go do this. Yeah. <laughs> that's like that for you. Yeah, and then about 20 minutes later, I'm like, nah, I'm, <laughs> I'm not. It's midnight. I'm I'm not. Not. You are famous, baby. You're in my band. Right. right. Okay. <laughs> I'm on a famous podcast. <laughs> you guys are pretty big deal. <laughs> <laughs> my mom thinks so. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. That song that you just played us, um, could you tell us a little bit about what, what it's about? <coughs> um, yeah, so it's called Rise, and um, basically it talks about um, like moving on from difficult times. Right. And in the same time, it's like when you're like when you're stuck and you're trying to get out and, and do something for yourself. Yeah, okay. So that's the basic, yeah, bas- basically that's... Yes. Cool. Yeah. When, did, uh, when did you write it? I wrote that... Probably early or late 2021 or early 2022. Okay. Yeah, I was writing that song for the previous band, but right. we never got to actually practice or learn it. So gotcha. Yeah. When we started this new project, that was like, probably we got to play that one. Yeah. Because I had heard it and I was like, we need to play that song. It's a good song. Yeah, that's awesome. It is a good song. It's a good, it's beautiful. Absolutely. Well, I saw I saw uh, um, when you sent over the show notes and everything. You've got the YouTube link on there. And it's got a, a video of you guys playing that song live with the full band. Yeah. Man, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds really awesome. Thank you. Cool. Uh, yeah. It, does the that. rest of your um, original material have that kind of feel? That, um, would you say that that's kind of this, your sound, you know? I think so. Yeah, yeah. I would say yeah. so. Yeah. And we, yeah. I know when we first got together, we were trying to like, what kind of band are we going to be? Are we going to be alternative rock, indie rock? Like, and you, we, know, you say one so thing and it turns into something we else. Yeah. Go and and were, yeah. I think that's kind of the direction that we're. I find that we're there's a lot to. of bands, a lot of bands that get together and and you know try to figure out what direction they should go in. And I think it's more you important just to get it. just to get yeah just get together. It'll happen per, like yeah. naturally. It'll yeah. just it'll just become what it is. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. It's probably a good idea to have your eye on the direction a little bit but then if it veers off it not be too bothered about it you know right i mean if it sounds good and yeah 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 yeah, for sure yeah um so uh we've got some uh we got you you brought some pictures of some of your gear in didn't you let's take a look it's so what do we got going oh yeah yeah. speaking of veering off so (laughs) i guess the uh the strat itself that was actually my my first electric i bought for myself oh cool and back in the day i was i was big into punk rock yeah i switched i mean what makes that guitar kind of special is the fact that it was my first electric, but also the uh, the bridge pickup is a, like a Hot Rails, a Seymour Duncan Hot Rails. I switched it out. I was yeah. like, I'm going to play some punk rock, and it's going to be awesome. Yeah. I don't play much more punk rock anymore. Gotcha. But uh, I have I still have it, and I still have that little extra oomph yeah. for, you know, when we're doing stuff. So it's it's kind of neat. It actually is funny because it still fits in all the things that we're doing. And Yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, pretty, they're cool pickups, sweet. those Hot Rails. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave it. Um, and yeah. uh, obviously you see the Helix up there as well. Oh, yeah. Tell That's, us a little uh, bit about how you feel about the Helix. Yeah, I'm curious. I, I know that the, the hardcore two-band people are probably going to look at me kind of funny, but <laughs> um, I mean, I had been ex- I was exposed to using it uh, in the last band that I was in, and one of the guys had it, and I was like just kind of checking it out. I was like, man, that, that thing has everything. Yeah. And uh, I mean... I mean it had way more than what my current my pedal board had on it, yeah. and so I was like, "I'm check it out." And now, I mean, little by little, I kind of started using it more, and then um, I just now I exclusively use it basically because it. Yeah. I mean, it has everything you could ever ever want. How do you feel about the amp sims? Do you think that they sound like yeah, a real? Yeah. I think they're great, and I think yeah. most people can't can't tell what yeah. you're using. Do you think they're... anyone can honestly? No. I yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. Like you were saying, the, the the diehard two band people. You know, you talk to those guys, and they'll tell you like, "Oh, I, I can hear a difference." But there might be there might be an ever. Sli- I mean, there has to be. I mean, realistically, there has to be a difference. But I think it's got to be so slight that there's no way that anybody can really, really pick it out, you know? Maybe there's a couple of guys. There's two know? guys, yeah. that, <laughs> yeah. two guys <laughs> that, have, that have been on this <laughs> show <laughs> <laughs> that can do it, you know? Yeah. That, that's it. But those, yeah, those... Uh, all those units, man, those Helix and the Headrush and all those things, like they have come a yeah. long, long way yeah. in the last few years. Just in, just time. in the last, like, I would say three to five years. 
they've made this huge improvement on, on this stuff. And, and yeah, like you were saying earlier that it's nice to be able to just plug it right in yeah. and, and record straight from there. You don't even have to worry about an amp or anything yeah. when you're doing that stuff. Yeah, because, the you know, the sound that you... The sound that you get live yeah. using it is the same exact sound you're going to get recording with it. Sure, because yeah. it's direct out right to right to board. Yeah, see, that's amazing. Yeah. Do you use a, a monitor? What do you use to? Uh, do you just go through the house? Um, yeah, usually, yeah. You know, it depends on the gig. Usually, if it's uh, the house has a fairly decent PA system, which most of the places we've been playing lately had a good PA. Yeah. So you go right to PA. I usually I have a little speaker I keep as like a monitor speaker. Right. Okay. I have, you know, set that up near me, and then you know everything nice. else goes to the PA. Yeah, it's just a regular mon like monitor yeah. type speaker. Yeah, a little right? head rush, uh, whatever ten inch speaker. Yeah, gotcha. So, um, what kind of venues have you been playing? Like, where where do you guys where do you guys play? Um, we've kind of been scattered. Well, um, stadium. Yeah, well, you know, uh, Madison Square Garden and uh, Hard Rock. Someday. Hard, yeah. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> you set Not your sights high, Not man. You set your sights high. <laughs> Someday. Someday. Um, let's see, we've done uh, Elmo's Rock Bar in Boynton. Right. Um, yeah. Played that there for uh, Saving Rock and Roll Festival, which was pretty neat. There's a guy who puts that on. Um, we played in Miami. We actually have an, one coming up in Miami, uh, Kill Your Idol in Miami Beach. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, in That's April. a cool spot. So yeah, it's a great vibe. Yeah, yeah. We were weren't sure, um, but we had played there last year, and they right. asked to come back. Ask us to come back. Oh nice. Um, but it's a great vibe of a place. Yeah. yeah. Usually, usually we don't go that far south. At least. That's know. actually where but, we play our first show. But as, it's awesome. As, as this group. All oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So. We're, I've rarely played in Miami since I've been there. I have done, but it's not. It, I don't know how much call for like bluegrass and Irish music there is in Miami. I'm sure there's a bit because it's a big city, but you yeah, know. I mean it's a great spot. They you know they kind of they welcome original tunes. You know yeah. they, they don't want they just they're not the place they want. They don't want just a four hour cover of cover songs. They yeah. welcome some original music. Yeah, the people there are great. They're very nice, and uh, you know they got a great PA system and yeah. it sounds great in there. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, hell yeah. Churchill's was the place that I used yeah. to play all the time with, with, you know, punk rock bands and stuff like that. That's, yeah. in terms of Miami, by far and away the place I've played the most is Churchill's. Yeah. Sure. Do, you, do you find, I mean, I know you guys, you, you said, team. and then you said you were playing, uh, you know, a handful of, of gigs, you know, last year, and then this year you guys are focusing on recording and stuff, but do you find that finding those kinds of venues that, that are just like, hey, we really want you to play originals and maybe play with some other bands and just do an hour set or whatever. Do you, do you find that those are hard, harder to find than like the regular play three, four hour cover gig Absolutely. venues? Yeah. 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 I think yeah. that's becoming, I hate to say that it's a dying thing, but it kind of is. Like they're well, getting, it's, it's definitely rarefied. It's a, that's yeah. Sure. It's, they're, they're getting harder and harder yeah. to find. There's only like maybe, I, I could probably count on one hand in Palm Beach County, the venues that I can think of that welcome that type of show. You know? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm the one that does most of the bookings for our band. Yeah. Oh, nice. I mean, like I've had places like, I guess, I, I guess they look at our website and, you know, they see that we do original music and stuff like that. And I've had them, like, just come, like, before you can, like, say hello, we don't hire, we only do cover bands. I'm like, uh, we, we do play covers, we do play cover songs. Like, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, but uh, it, it's very, it's, some places are, you know, they, yeah. they want just a jukebox to play some yeah cover it's a weird it's a weird thing to navigate yeah you know, we we play a little bit of both you know yeah we play we play as many we we really play as many of our original songs as we want in amongst the covers over three hours yeah, yeah. no one really cares yeah just as so long as you play a couple of songs people know yeah i would say in a, in a three hour gig we probably do an hour's worth of of or more even sometimes of our own oh, original cool. music nobody cares yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And not that they don't care about originals but that as long, I mean, we're playing them. People are still dancing. They're still having a good time. Nobody's right. saying like, "Oh my God, you didn't play a cover song." Yeah, know? just yeah. so long as like the last fifteen minutes of the whole night is is tunes that they all know, so they can sort of drunkenly th yeah. throw themselves around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I guess with that said, there are a couple of good venues that are local <laughs> around locally. You know that yeah. that they're great spots. They they like original music. They like cover music. They're we actually have a pretty good music scene down here. I, would I say. agree with that. Now you said you you pretty much grew up down here, like you know you yeah. came down here when you were like twelve or something. Yeah. You said yeah. So so how you? I mean I I guess you you didn't get into the music scene until later though, right? Yeah, I mean twenties or something. Yeah, yeah. So how do you feel <laughs> about the music scene like then versus now down here? Um, how do you feel like it's changed if if at all? 
I don't know that it's changed too much. Okay. I mean, yeah. I guess perspective yeah. is 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 everything as well, and it's difficult to tell, you know, from when you were younger to now yeah. if it's just because you're you were yeah. younger. Than well, you. I felt I felt like because I grew up down here, I, I was born here, and and I felt like, and we've had this conversation before that I felt like there was a lot more of those. Um, you know, respectables and propaganda, mm-hmm. those types of places, you know, used to be Some raised downtown blues and spankies and, you know, all these places that there used to be a lot more places that had that kind of original mm-hmm. vibe, bringing in bands, regional bands, national bands, even. Um, it, it just, I don't feel like there's a whole lot of mm-hmm. that anymore. No. It's hard to find those places. Yeah. yeah well, I guess it's, so it's down to, you know, it's down to all of us as music fans and players of music to, to change that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah of course. Sure. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So what do you guys got coming up? Um, we have a show in Kill Your Idol, April... 12th. 12th. April 12th. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So going back and, uh, and you're going in the studio soon? Yeah, hopefully and, uh, next week or the next two weeks. Is there yeah. any kind of idea about when you want to start releasing stuff? You got any so kind we of have two songs we want to record. Right. Um, the one that you guys heard and then yeah. another one. Um, and so... We'll probably we feel we'll get that done within the next two three weeks yeah and then you know we're all t- we're gonna actually also start booking our shows as well for start probably starting around april or we'll probably push it out to april and start gotcha. getting some stuff on more nice. stuff on the books yeah yeah good stuff man what we got going on with ourselves we have this weekend we got yeah. mega malley's on friday all right which is always fun up in melbourne can uh, you remember oh i got it here. okay yeah mega malley's friday yeah you um, guys have grouper yeah, we got group of three to six on yeah, Saturday. As a duo. And then Saturday night we got Carson's. Yeah. And it's a fun weekend. Yeah, it's going to be a really fun weekend. Two of my favorite places. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're always, it's always a party at those places. Yeah, man. Carson's is rad, man. Yeah, there's not really a stage there, but for some reason a vibe just gets going in there. You know, it just works. Yeah. yeah. They just get rowdy and fun. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Which is always, which is always fun to watch when you're sober. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's always fun to watch everybody else get rowdy and stupid. I know it's like a superpower being sober among drunk people. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, listen, thank you so much for coming out. We thank really you guys appreciate for having us. it. Yeah. And um, why don't you sort of. Uh, Tell everyone about the website and everything. You're good at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, as everybody knows, it's www.561music.com. Um, there you can find the links to all of the uh, shows, all of the um, all the podcast shows. There's links to jump to YouTube so you can watch the shows instead of listen to them. Um, there's links for Killbillies. There's yeah. links for... Um, uh, donations. There's links for sponsoring shows, etc. Um, as you guys know, the show costs us money. It's not something. It's not something that's free to do. Um, plus, we do the music festival once a year, so uh, which will be coming up here in April first. So um, all these things cost money. We appreciate sponsorship. We appreciate donations. Um, ben and I are not making money off of the show. This <laughs> is this is literally we take a hundred percent of what we make and put it right back into the show to keep producing this. And we do this because we love the local music scene. Um, because we love meeting new musicians. You know, I never would have heard of you guys otherwise. You know, you guys send in the submission. Awesome, I clicked the link. I watched it. I said, yeah, let's get these guys on. Let's get yeah. to know them. Let's listen to some more of your music, you know, and it's that that's why we do this show. This exact reason right here is why because yeah, we've had a lot awesome. of musicians on that's here awesome. that that uh, that we knew already that were kind of our friends that are in the scene where but this right here is 100% why we do the show yeah, because totally. we get to meet new musicians. We get to make new connections. Um, yeah. Those musicians get to make connections with us and then we get to share that with everyone everybody who listens whether they're musicians or not or whatever and it just yep. yeah i love it i love it I love that's really cool it. yeah so 561 music uh dot com. on that festival and uh yeah we're working on the festival and then uh at 561 music podcast is all of our socials so yeah. like subscribe follow us send us money all, <laughs> all, all of the above yeah. call me you know. <laughs> Nice one. Yeah. Gonna get Thanks. some underwear in the mail, or <laughs> right? I mean, you know, listen, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. He's not hundred percent opposed to that, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Yeah. Appreciate awesome. it. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Nice. See ya. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice guys.